in the front here. Matt, from a defensive point of view, oh sorry, it's Bryn from Rugby News Service. Um, from a defensive point of view, obviously the last game couldn't have gone any better really. Um, will you set, your, set the team a similar target of uh, keeping Russia to nil for tomorrow night? Listen, I think uh, that's probably the target every time you play an opposition, but certainly we know how uh, big a team they are and how physical they are. Um, we need to make sure that we're getting off the line and doing a good job in the tackle. And I, th I think we certainly did that against Samoa. Um, but we know that there's a big challenge ahead because they are a, a big physical side, particularly in the forwards. So that's, that's a challenge we, uh, we face at the moment. Any other questions? Uh, Sorry, we've got one over here. Just put your hand up and we'll, and we'll bring it to you. But we've got a question over here. Uh, Greg Stutchby from Reuters. Um, I know you guys do a lot of work on defence, but uh, the Russians do tend to kick a lot, and that's mm -hmm. pretty much their basic game plan. Sure. How do you defend against that, or do you just work on counter-attacks? Yeah, listen, they do, we understand that they kick a lot. I think, I believe they kick the most in the comp at the moment and uh, that's the type of game plan they're playing. So I think from a de defensive point of view, you don't want to give them front football, first of all, on their carries because then if they're kicking, then they're not coming forward on the ball. So that's the first thing. The other thing is that we want to put huge pressure on their nine and 10 when they kick. So if we do that, that hopefully presents us with some good counter-attack ball. Um, but I think, like I said, I think the initial hits and contacts, we've just got to make sure we're really good in that. And then secondly, pressure their kicking game. Um, and then lastly, you've got to make sure that you're, you're good in the air because you've got to take those. And it's like another set piece for us, really, isn't it? Another ability to attack from. So that's how we're looking at it. In the front here, please. And did you put Pierre? Matt, how important will Tommy Seymour be in that sense then if, uh, if the high ball is something that they, they target your back, your back three? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Yeah, he's massive. Um, he's very, very, very good in the air and that's one of the reasons why he's got the nod and um, he, he's excellent in the air. He's probably, if not our best player in the air, so it's going to be huge. Just wait, this is just still getting translation. Okay. Matt, the... Ireland and Samoa games, in terms of the physicality of them that you produced and the collision in particular were chalk and cheese. What have you been doing this week to concentrate on making sure you get it right this time around? Well, we've certainly watched a number of clips of them um, being very, very physical with their ball carries. Um, so we've certainly talked about that. We've done a bit of work in terms of their contact and their tackling and their dual contacts. Um, and we've talked about how important this is in winning the game. So I think, uh, as I probably mentioned after the Samoa game, uh, that's probably the template for all teams in this competition at the moment. The teams that are winning the physicality battle, whether it's with the ball, without the ball, tends to be the team that comes out on top. So I think the Samoa game for us was a template. Um, we've just got to make sure that we continue that with all games that we play, because as we know, it's basically a quarter final for us with every game we play. Hi, Matt. Um, the, 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 this typhoon seems to be changing its mind. Going to have a go at Scotland instead. We were hearing this morning. Um, did, uh, has World Rugby been, been in touch with you for any suggesting that they would have a contingency, a different venue, or anything? Yeah, not that I know of. Um, I don't think so, to be honest. Um, usually, the the management will kind of update us on that, but I can't be 100% sure. But we haven't talked about it as a coaching group, and I think if they had. We, we would have by this stage, but that's not to say that might not occur down the track, so. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Matt. Um, one of the, straight ahead. No. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one of the sort of big trends at this World Cup seems to be the, the use of the sort of kick pass, cross field kicks uh, from fly halves to wingers. Um, what What can, you and other defence coaches do to sort of protect against that, protect against that, because it seems to be such an effective tactic. Yeah, it's a, a very interesting tactic. I think um, with defences putting more and more in the front line, there's certainly space 
behind people's um, front line in defence. So I think you've got to read cues from the nine and tens. You've got to understand a team's kicking game. Uh, I mean, we've had a really good look at Russia. We understand they kick a lot. But we also want to read cues of when they're kicking and basically the types of kicks. So it's a combination of all of them. Certainly this week, when we've been practising, we've been trying to replicate the, the Russian kicking game. And that's, that's part of every game that we come up against. And we've probably done it the most this week because of the amount they kick. Matt, just a question on short main, Sean Maitland. He didn't um, seem to take part today. Is there any, any concern about him for Sunday? Listen, he had a little bit of a tight groin. Uh, we're working our way through that at the moment. Um, we're very confident that he'll play a part um, against Japan. So, um, yeah, he's just going through the protocols. So, yeah, so he's, um, yeah, he's, he's, he's just going through the protocols, but we're, we're confident he's going to be fine for Sunday. OK, we'll just hold that till we get the guys in. Ah, <laughs> oh, just Sean, OK. Right, just to confirm as well, is Alan Dale come through the, the head concussion protocols as well? Yeah, Alan, Alan's in a good spot. He's, done, he's just done a, a bout of hard contact with me now and he came through that really well. In the front here? Right. Yep. Yep. Thank you very much. Nice to see you. <laughs> oh, yeah, cheers. Uh. <laughs> okay, first question for John. Anyone want the first question? Don't want to rush. Yep, in the front here. Uh, Bryn Palmer from Rugby News Service. Uh, John, you obviously started the first game and then uh, left out for the last one. Can you just uh, give us an insight into how you've dealt with that situation? <laughs> Nothing like looking back, is there? Um, yeah, I've been disappointed, obviously. Uh, it's frustrating. Um, the whole game was frustrating, but uh, that's, part of, that's part of being a player. And, um, I think that's the first time I've been outside the squad since I've been back involved um, a couple of years ago. So it's been, yeah, it's been pretty frustrating. But the boys played very well against Samoa, um, and now I'm just excited about playing Russia. To be honest. Sorry, could you just use the microphone just because we got the live translation? Yeah, and then a year and a half since you last captain Scotland. How does it feel to be back in the position? Um. Is I've I've always loved captaining the team, um, but equally it's, it's a strange one. I love doing it, but um, you know it comes with pressures and responsibilities. So when you're not captain, um, you can be a bit more relaxed a little bit, I think. But um, for me, it's a massive a massive honour, especially at a World Cup. Um, there's a big goal of mine to get out here, so to be able to captain the team is big. But on, on, you know, on, I guess. Aside from that, it doesn't change a great deal. I know we've spoken about this a few times, but just you know, when Rambo's captain or Greg, there's still you still have those guys around him, you know, uh, Ryan or whoever else it may be, to to bring that leadership. Duncan Taylor, someone else, you know, there's a lot of experience through the team from different teams, and it brings that and helps out. Yep. Yep. Do you shake hand with the script? The big games that a lot of the guys have rested. You still see this as a chance to work your way into the, the game? Fine. Um, uh, it's a tough one to answer. Uh, the big game for me is probably tomorrow, to be honest. I don't know what team is for Japan. Uh, I'm not trying to be, I guess, facetious about that. Um, I guess the, the, the reality, if you look at it, is the guys playing to are probably on the outskirts. That's that's the way you have to look at it. It's not doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. But 
equally the guys who are playing are, are motivated. Some guys haven't played at all. Some guys have played a little bit. Um, and you're playing for Scotland in a World Cup. So for me, yeah, it's, it's about putting in a big performance and, and trying to prove that I deserve to be involved against Japan. In the blue shirt, yep. And then behind. Duncan Smith from the Scotsman. John, um, obviously it's a, you were disappointed to be left out, but there's been a lot of talk about how it's a, a squad mentality and there was a lot of plaudits for Jamie and Magnus and Blade against Samoa. What were your impressions of their performance? They're rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were, they were good, weren't they? Um, I, I didn't expect any different. I played with, obviously, with Maggie and, uh, and Jamie at Edinburgh, so I know, I know the quality they have. Um, and I, I know enough about Blade from uh, speaking to the boys down at Scarlet still to know the quality he has and just from being in, in and around him. So um, it's one of those ones where you, you knew there would be, a, I knew there would be a reaction. Um, so to be part of that, I, I didn't doubt that the back row would play well. Uh, it was a physical game and those boys were very good, I thought. Tom Bradshaw, the rugby paper. Um, we saw Russia frustrate Ireland in terms of getting the bonus point. What's the message in terms of how you go about trying to acquire that, that four tries? Uh, I, I spoke about it a little bit outside just there, just in terms of uh, I've played enough of these games where if you try and score four tries before you've scored one, you can get in a bit of trouble. You know, we're not thinking about that early on. We literally, we, if it gets to 70 minutes and we've scored one, that might be the case. But we have to back ourselves. We can't. You know, we can't score the fourth until we score the third. So we have to literally go through the process, back our skills, grind them down. We believe our fitness will be superior to theirs. So um, we'll back ourselves. Um, we're confident, but we also, you know, we've seen how, you know, the trouble they've given every team they've played at the World Cup. They're physical. Um, they're hard at the breakdown. They, they make things niggly. They make things awkward. And, and when they have the ball, they're, they're abrasive. They're direct. They're, they're hard. So, uh, yeah, we're under no illusions about it. John, um, sorry, we're just still getting the end of that trend. Sorry. Okay. Japanese takes a bit longer. <laughs> John, there, there are five guys in this squad that haven't played uh, in the World Cup so far. Um, there's others, um, but maybe with a point to prove after Ireland. What's the kind of collective vibe in the in training and amongst the 23 going into tomorrow? It's been pretty good, to be honest. Um, like, like you said, there's five guys that haven't played at all. Um, you know, they're, they're sort of chomping at the bit. We've been here over four weeks now and they've not played a minute of rugby, so that's pretty frustrating for them. You know, I, I've not played a huge amount um, in four weeks. So uh, throughout the squad, there's, um, I guess, yeah, points to prove um, to selection, uh, but points to prove to themselves. And guy, guys want to go out and, like I said, it's, it's a World Cup, it's the big stage. Um, it's just going to be, it's great to be, to be able to play for Scotland again. You were speaking earlier about the pressure of being captain and having leaders around you, but this team, there's a lot of younger players, not nearly as many players. Does that increase the pressure on you? Um, not really, because we've still got some good leaders, um, experienced guys, you know, someone like uh, Fraser Brown or Ryan. Um, and then you, you go into the back, someone like Horney's played, you know, a lot of rugby. Um, Duncan Taylor, you know, won. Champions Cup leagues with, with Saracens, being player of the year for Saracens, Thomas Seymour. You know, there's a lot of guys who've actually played a lot of rugby at the top level there. So um, I, I always think that the job of us is people say, oh, we, we, you know, we have to try and bring our experience, but it's a bit of both. You know, they, they bring a lot of youthful exuberance, a lot of energy. Um, and it's for us in the heat, uh, that can be contagious to have that, those young guys who, who are so full of energy and want to run and want to play everything. That can be great for us. So we're just still waiting for the translation. Yeah. John, we, you're four weeks now into, into the camp out in Japan. We saw your rather interesting uh, social media post the other day with Mr Wilson. Just wonder if you can give us any other sort of insights into how you guys have been keeping yourselves entertained uh, in the hotel and things like that. You're always looking for this stuff, aren't you? <laughs> um, what have we done? We play a lot of cards, which doesn't sound very interesting. Um, what do we do? I don't actually know. <laughs> we spend a lot of time, a lot of indoor cricket. Um, people are starting to get up to a bit of no good in the hotel. 
a bit of messing around. Um, but yeah, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I don't know. Someone was talking about taping all the furniture in someone's room to the ceiling the other day. <laughs> but I don't know. We, we just, I don't know. We, we don't have that much time with the travel to and from training um, and all the sort of boring stuff that we have to do in terms of recovery and uh, looking at computers. And, and amongst that, we, you know, we do the, I guess we do the normal stuff like we're at home. It's just a bit more, I guess, exciting to go out to different places and to um, go and try different things. Um, we went and saw the Joker last night. It's very good, if anyone's seen it. It's very good. Ryan was doing a good impression. But uh, yeah, it's been, it's, been, it's been fun, to be honest. I think tours can sometimes, as much as I love touring, they can drag on a little bit. Um, you know, we've been over, over four weeks now, but I think um, certainly I haven't felt any discontent. Everyone's, I think, enjoying themselves. Um, and I guess we're getting to the pressure stages now in terms of it's kind of do or die. OK, we've got time for two more. On here and here. Got your earpiece in. Oh, there's, there's going to be a Japanese mouse for, is it? Well, here we go. Let's give this a go. えっと静岡新聞の木村と言います。明日はえっ、ー、とスタジアムはちょっと違う雰囲気になるかもしれません。というのも静岡県内から小中学生高校生が1万6600人ほど試合を見に来ます。それも学校行事としてです。多くの子どもたちが皆さんのプレーを見守っていると思いますが、まあ子どもたちにどんなプレーを見せてあげたいと思いますか。It's quite fun, that. Um... 16,000 school kids are coming, if Evan didn't have the earpieces in. Yeah, 16,000 kids are coming to, uh, to watch. So we went to a school, where, where were we last? In uh, Kobe, we went to school in Kobe. And it was, I think there was only 500 there and it was pretty hectic, um, but in a good way. There was a lot of energy. I think this country has a lot of energy and enthusiasm for, for everything, but rugby in particular. So um, I, think, I think for me, it's, uh, Japan have embraced this World Cup you know, completely. Um, you go to the schools, uh, wherever you go, there's things being drawn and written about in the whole school was, was covered in stuff about Scottish rugby. And I don't know how many would have watched a game of rugby before, but they are embracing it. So um, I guess for us, they, 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 the Japanese, when they, whenever I've listened to or watched the games, they get behind it. So hopefully that from us, um, we're hoping the way we play the game is to try and play a fast, open brand of rugby, uh, which should be exciting for them to watch. Is someone translating yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, you don't need anyone else in Japanese. Yeah. Okay, so, so John's going to leave us now. We've got time for a bit more with Ryan before we head off. Did they? Did they, John? Yeah, I can hear myself. We've got one in the middle here, and then we'll go to you. Just in the middle right there. Yep. Oh, was it John? OK. All right, we'll go here. Ryan, first things first. You were at the Joker last night. And Do I have to wear this? Sorry. No, no. no maybe for me. You maybe need to translate for me. You probably will need to translate. I mean, if it's in Japanese. Right, OK. Thank God. Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm from, I'm from other as well, so you might, you'll be all right. Um, you were at the Joker last night, and John says you do a good impersonation. Yeah, I do, yeah. But I'll, keep that, <laughs> I'll hold that back for after the game. <laughs> is, is that important to have these you know, moments of downtime with the team ahead of what is a, a huge game for you boys? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we've got plenty of time off. Um, when we train, we train hard, but we've got to enjoy the times off the field and... Um, it was just one of the things, yeah, nipping to the cinema yesterday. I was surprised they showed it in English. It was uh, pretty handy. So, um, But you've, you've got to get out and explore this wonderful country. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful place and, and we're lucky to be here. We're lucky to be at a World Cup. Not a lot of people get the, um, get the chance to travel the world like we do. So you've got to make sure you get out and enjoy it. All right then. Second row here. Oh. Uh, Ryan, we spoke to John uh, about this. Guys like you and him would have been expected at the start of the tournament to be wrapped in cotton wool for that final game against Japan. You find yourselves involved in 
this game? How hard has it been just to, to keep your mind on the level and, and get yourself up for this match, which is obviously still a very important one? Yeah, it's, it's been easy. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's going to be chopping and changing with such short turnarounds, you know, with how people play, with giving people opportunities. So we know that we're here as a squad to do, you know, a job of making sure we make that quarters first and then, and then push on further. So it's easy. You, you come to train every day with a group of men that are looking, to, you know, to achieve the same goal. So it's not been difficult for me. Any other questions? Hi Ryan, um, Matt, Matt Taylor was saying he's doing a lot of training and um, um, expecting a big kicking game from the Russians. It's number eight now with a lot of kick receiving. Has that been has that been your focus over the uh, over the past few days? Yeah, we've, well, we've obviously looked at how they play and, and they've, so far this tournament they're the team that has kicked the most. Um, they've got a good kick in ten, um, so we'll be expecting him to to be doing the same thing, um, and, and that's something that we've trained towards and, and looked at. So yeah, definitely. Time for one more. Yeah. Ryan, I mean, so many people are talking about the Japan game on Sunday, but that's irrelevant if you don't get the job done tomorrow. So there's, even though it's not as high profile maybe as the Japan game, it's in, in its own way, it's every bit as important. There must be a big burden of expectation and pressure on you to get, to get the job done so Sunday becomes relevant. Yeah, certainly. You know, it, it, we have to get, we pretty much have to get five points out of this game. So... Um, we've, we've spoken about that, but we've got to make sure we go out and play the right game. But yeah, there's a, there's a massive burden on these players, and but we're players that are good enough to, to do this. We're the ones that have made this this squad, this 31-man squad that's representing Scotland. Um, so, you know, whatever team we pick out, that 31-man squad is there to do the job, and and everyone's capable. So it's exciting, um, and, it, and it's good for for some of the guys that haven't had an opportunity to play in such a high-profile game because it is. Um, we talk about Russia, but. You know, they've, they've not been an easy pushover for any team yet. So um, it, it'll be a tough test and a massive, massive test for us. OK, thank you very much. Beautiful. Do I need to take this somewhere now? No, nah, just let it down. Cheers, guys.